is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. It is rough. I I don't know where to reason with any of this because there is none. And you know, we've we've reached a a fork in the road. That's kind of what's happened now for the Miami Dolphins and for the front office, for the coaches, for the players. And I say we've reached a fork in the road because you've got your team now is one in four through the first five games. Nearly a third of your season is gone. A lot of us had higher hopes, yours truly. I was hoping that they were ready to turn the corner. I knew that there was a chance that maybe they could take a step back this year. But what we're watching, you know, in the back of my mind, I knew that there's a chance, obviously. But I didn't think it'd be anything like this. And really, that's the problem right now that, you know, somebody was telling me, oh, well, you know, I had this game as a loss. And I told him, it's not the loss. It's how you lose. That's the difference. And a lot of us, I think, in the Dolphin Nation, if you would have gone there and you would have played a respectable game and lost, it sucks to lose. We don't want to see the Dolphins lose. But we have to be honest, the Bucs are the world champions. They're the better team right now. So you kind of expected, no matter how big of a fan you are, and you can be a blind-ass fan and all that, deep down inside, you knew that was going to be a loss. And we can live with it. We can deal with it even at 1-3. and three. We can deal going to 1-4 and four and losing with the Bucs because it's a much better team. They're the world champions. But the way you're losing... The way you're, you know, the way you got manhandled by the Colts, the way you did not even bother to show up against the Bills, and the these things are disturbing. And they, and what I mean by we're in a fork in the road. You're one in four. Now, Brian Flores and company have put themselves in a position now where they have no room for error anymore. They're done. And they've already lost a lot of the fan base because there's a ton of you already. You want to fire Greer. You want to fire Flo, all of that. I'm not a fan of that right now. I got to be honest with you. I'm not a fan. But if you're the owner, you have to be contemplating that. You have no choice because you have to... You have to find out, do you have competence? And I tell you, you're in a fork in the road because you've got 12 games left now. Pay attention. Baltimore on a Thursday night, you're going to lose that game. You're never nearly as physical as Baltimore ever, and you haven't bridged that gap yet. It's not that you fear their passing game but it's that you fear that they're going to run all over you anyways, and they're going to be more physical than you. So that's a loss, right? Um, The at Tennessee, probably a loss. They're not going to stop Derrick Henry. So that's probably a loss. And you've got at Buffalo in three weeks. That's a loss, right? Those are losses. So let's go to one and seven. Now follow me. Now the rest of the games are winnable next week against the Jags following week against Atlanta, uh, four weeks from now against Houston at Hard Rock, uh, at the Jets, Carolina, against the Giants, against the Jets again, at New Orleans, and versus New England. Those are all winnable games, so you can go nine and three. But the way they're playing, do you think they're going to win all those winnable games? Can we actually say... They're supposed to win those games. The way they've played, the way they've started, there's no way anybody can say, well, no, they'll win those next nine games and they'll have 10 wins on the season and they'll finish 10 and seven. This is 10 and seven. Forget about 11 or 12 wins, any of the craziness that some of us had. Okay. Forget about that. Just to get to 10. 
You got to win all the winnable games. Well, I thought the Colts was a winnable game. Last time I checked. Uh, the Raiders it was kind of a winnable game. You didn't win it. So now you start to lose one of those games. It's nine wins. You lose another one of those games. It's eight wins. It's not going to be enough for the Dolphin Nation. Most of the Dolphin Nation, they're just going to say, this is the end of the road. I'm done with these guys. Fire Chris Greer, fire flow. The owner needs to go find somebody else, right? This is what's going to end up happening. I can already see it because I've I've been on this road before in, in this in this life. Now, the only thing that's going to save you is Tua. And not the season, his play. If he can somehow in the next 12 games stay healthy, one. Play well to convince you you got a franchise quarterback. That's the way you will roll over into the following season with hope. But right now, they have put themselves in a position that they are going to get absolutely throttled at the end of the year by fans, by media, by, by, by pundits all across the country. This is what's going to happen with the Miami Dolphins. They have to go perfect, and perfect is winning those next nine games. Can they do that? Right now, there's no part of me that says that they can do that. And that's why they are in a really interesting situation, because if you start to lose some of those games that are very winnable, you start to lose that locker room also. And I, I'm not going to say that Flo has lost that locker room because I don't believe he has yet. But he has a chance. He has a chance. We're going to find out more about this team and what kind of a connection Flo has with this team. Because right now, the feeling is he doesn't have a good connection with the team. So he's got 12 games now to figure it out and send a message back to his owner that, yeah, no, I, I, I've got this back on track and we're headed in the right direction. And it's going to be really, really hard, near impossible to do that now that you have put yourself in this position at one and four. I mean, this whole season's different right now if you beat the Raiders and the Colts. You're three and two. We can live with that. You lost to the Bills, you lost to the Bucks, you won your other three games, you got 12 to go, not bad. Now you're feeling better. It shows you those two games, how they have changed the complexion of the entire season. It's a really, really difficult point right now for this coaching staff, for these players, for the future of the Miami Dolphins, for Stephen Ross, for us as fans. This is really tough, man. And I don't want to see these guys fired. I don't want to see new coaches and new front office. And, and then they're all going to start all over again. And it's going to take a few more years. And it's just, it's this vicious cycle that we're in all the effing time. I, uh, I put out a tweet yesterday. And it's an old school tweet. And there was something called the chuck wagon when I was a kid. And when the chuck wagon is, it was a, a dog food, right? And there was always a child that was in the living room or whatever watching television. And the chuck wagon would come out and then run through, you know, cruise through the living room and then disappear. And those of us as kids, because, you know, kids, you have an imagination. I'm watching this commercial and I'm, you know, six, seven, eight years old or whatever. And I'm, I'm always like, man, I was always prepared just in case the chuck wagon showed up. I was like, man, that if that chuck wagon ever shows up in my house, I'm going to catch that bitch. There's no way that bitch is going to escape me. That was a commercial back in the, I don't know, I want to say 60s to 70s, I want to say was that commercial, something like that. And so that was like a thing with the chuck wagon disappearing and all that. And you always wanted the little wagon with the horses. 
And you're like, and this is the dolphin season for us. Like this is the season that we're gonna win and go to a super and it disappears on us. That's the dolphin season, the chuck wagon. The Super Bowl season, right there. That's the chuck wagon. Dog never gets it. Kid freaks out when he sees it. That's our dolphin season right there, dude. Crazy. This is the big old show. This is the big